Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to tackle the topic of the effect of Z or the effect of nuclear charge. The reason why we can't always just assume that the nuclear charge relative to the electrons in outer orbits is equal to the charge that's actually there. In the case of lithium there's three protons in the nucleus so therefore the nuclear charge is three plus and there's three electrons around the nucleus, two electrons in the innermost energy level, the third electron in the second energy level. But because of the shielding effect of the electrons in the innermost energy level, the outermost electron does not feel the attractive force from those three positive charges. The effective charge or the effective force that it feels is more as if the nuclear charge at the center is only 1.26 times the charge of a proton instead of three times the charge of a proton. So even though there's actually three protons there and the actual charge on the nucleus is plus three, the outer electron, if you were to assume that the inner electrons weren't there, feels an effective force of 1.26 positive charges. So the attractive force is far less than it would be if it felt the effect of the full three charges. And therefore, instead of being much closer to the nucleus because of the attractive force of three protons, it's much farther away from the nucleus because it feels an effective force due to the eff effective or, yeah, we could call it effective or apparent uh, attractive force of 1.26 charges. Now you may ask, well, how did I come up with that number? Well, that's of course a number that was experimentally derived through some measurements, and I'll show you in a way in how, you can how you can actually calculate that number. But at least I want you to understand that the effective result of where this electron is at, how large the orbit is, and how much force it feels, is not really due to the full three positive charges there, because they're partly shielded by the effect of those inner electrons, it is as if it only feels a force attracted to something that only has a charge of 1.26 uh, positive charges. So, a good definition for the effective Z or the effective nuclear charge, it's the apparently reduced, because it seems like it's reduced, or the effective nuclear charge caused by the shielding effect of the inner electrons. So you can imagine that when you start with much bigger uh, atoms that have many, many electrons in the inner orbit, so for the outer electron, it experiences a very different attraction, force of attraction, due to the effective charge at the center rather than the real charge at the center. So that's what we mean by effective charge. Now, so starting with the hydrogen atom, the ionization energy can be easily calculated because there's simply a single proton at the center and then we have a single electron going around in the first energy level, in the first s orbital. So removing that electron is very easily calculated. It's simply 1312 kilojoules per mole or uh, about 13.6 electron volts per electron. Now what is the ionization energy required if the electron resides in the second energy level rather than the first energy level? Or, what would the ionization energy be for a helium ion, not a helium atom, but a helium ion that's already ionized, where one electron is removed and you only have one electron left? How much energy does it take to remove that last electron from a helium atom? Well, it turns out we have a nice equation right here. The ionization energy to remove one single electron from an atom, provided it's the last electron there all other electrons have been removed. For example, if we're dealing with a lith lithium atom, we have to remove two electrons and then we try to remove the last electron. So basically, this is the ionization energy to remove the last electron in an atom. And it's equal to the base ionization energy for a hydrogen atom, which is 1312 kilojoules per mole, times the nuclear charge squared divided by the energy level the electron resides in squared. So, for in the case where we have a hydrogen atom, the electron resides in the first energy level, so n equals 1, and there's only one nuclear charge, so z equals 1, then you can see that it's 1312 kilojoules per mole times 1 squared divided by 1 squared, so it's simply equal to that. But in the case over here, so here we can simply say it's 1312 kilojoules per mole multiplied times 1 squared over 1 squared, and of course that's equal to that amount right there. But in this case right here, we already have the electron in the second energy level, so in this case n equals 2, z is still 1, so there we would get 1312 kilojoules per mole 
times 1 squared divided by 2 squared. Notice in this case the energy level is 2, so we take that number divided by 4. Let me get my calculator here, so we have 1312 divided by 4 equals, and that would be 328 kilojoules per mole. So notice, if you try to remove an electron from the second energy level in a hydrogen atom, it only takes 312 kilojoules per mole, which is only one quarter of what it would be if you take it out of the first energy level. What if we take a helium ion, one that's already been ionized, it only has one electron left, it's in the innermost energy level, but remember the nuclear charge is two. So using the same equation, the energy uh, to remove that electron would be 312 kilojoules per mole, multiply times z squared, in this case z is 2, that would be 4, so 2 squared, divided by 1 squared, so it's 4 times as much, so it's 5,248 kilojoules per mole. So notice that it's relatively easy to figure out what the ionization energy would be if there's only one electron left in an atom or in an ion, and then how much it would take to remove that last electron. But usually we're not dealing with that sort of thing. We're dealing with a case where there's multiple electrons still there, and we're trying to remove this, this electron from the atom. And notice there's a shielding effect. So we can still use the very same equation, but instead of using this equation, we have to use the effect of Z the effective nuclear charge, not the actual nuclear charge. So to figure out how much energy it would take to remove this third electron from lithium with the other two still there, then what we would have to use, the equation now becomes I is equal to 1312. Oh, I said 312, but I didn't write 1312. Let me try that again. So that would be 1312 kilojoules per mole times z effective squared over n squared. Now, let's plug in the number that we know it is. It's 1.26. Didn't show yet how we arrived at, arrived at that number. So in this case, it would be 1,312 kilojoules per mole times z effective, which is 1.26 squared divided by n squared. Now notice, this electron is in the second energy level, so we have to write 2 squared. And let's see what we end up with. So this is equal to 1,312 times 1.26 squared divided by 4 equals, and we get 521, that would be kilojoules per mole, and that is actually very close to the actual amount that we got. If you look at a previous video and look for the first ionization energy for lithium, you'll get a number very close to that. And the way they really try to calculate the effect of Z is they can measure this in an experiment and then they work themselves backwards to figure out what the effect of Z is. And that's how they come up with these numbers for the effective nuclear charge of the atoms. But at least now you can see why we need it. In most cases, we're never really dealing with pulling the last electron out of an atom or out of an ion. We're really dealing with pulling an electron out through either an experiment or to a chemical reaction. And the other electrons are still there shielding the electron we're removing from the nucleus, causing the effective Z, the effective nuclear charge, to be different. And if we use the effective nuclear charge, we can then calculate the ionization energy for those electrons that we remove. And hopefully that gives you a good idea what the effect of Z is or the effect of nuclear charge.